Hello, hello, happy Saturday, my friends. You know what time it is. It is time for the Saturday Six, my weekly series where I like to talk about three candles and three beauty or lifestyle products ish <laughs> this week and just give you some mini reviews on that. So I apologize that I had to miss this video last week. I came down with illness uh, very out of nowhere it felt like. I mean I know that there's a lot of illness going around and I have children who go to school and let's be honest they're just little petri dishes as cute and lovable as as they are uh they bring in a lot of germs and what i thought was initially allergies actually turned into like a nasty head cold and um yeah just lots of coughing my kids were also on spring break so that was really fun to be sick their entire spring break um thankfully we didn't have any plans but i'm back this week and ready to talk to you guys about um just some things that have been, I've been using over the week and maybe a procedure that I had done. So if you are interested in hearing my thoughts, let's go ahead and get into them. So you may notice, Katie, you don't have any makeup on today. And you know what's funny? I actually think I notice that more or I, I don't wanna say it bothers me because quite frankly, I don't really care if people see me without makeup. I love it. It's fun to put on, but as I always tell my children, especially my two daughters, makeup is fun but it's perfectly okay if people see me without it. And so that's where I'm coming on screen today like this because I had my eyebrows touched up this week. So I have what is called um, combo powder brows. Um, we do a little bit of microblading here in the front and then I get the powder brows on like the mid to the tail of my brows. And um, I initially had that procedure done last February. When you initially get it done, it's um, usually in two parts. So you get the procedure done. It takes about three hours, or at least it took my girl about three hours to do it, which I'm fine. I'm like, go, go slow and get it right. Totally fine with that. Um, but it takes about three hours. And for the 10 to 14 days, well, it's usually 10 days, um, afterwards they say you cannot get your brows wet. Um, they're gonna go through a process where they're going to scab, they're gonna get itchy, they're going to peel, they're gonna flake. I mean, it, it's really gonna be a lovely process here. But because I cannot give my face a good thorough washing, meaning like I can wash my face under here, but like I'm the type of person I like to go big or go home. I wanna wash my whole face and if I can't do that, I'm not going to apply a full face of makeup. I'm not gonna put eye makeup on. And so um, for the next few days, probably about like the next week, um, I'm just going to enjoy a little break from makeup. So, um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about that. That is actually one of the things that I'm talking about this week in the beauty realm is the procedure of having my eyebrows um, micro shaded or microbladed, whatever we want to call it here. So yes, like I said, it's done in a two part series or like initially it takes two appointments. So you, you did that first one, that's about three hours. Then you wait about six weeks, six to eight weeks, and then you go back in for a touch up. That usually takes about another hour and a half. And they go in and they just kind of see how have your brows initially healed from the first procedure? Where do they need to darken up and give more shading? Um, and so I had that done last February and April of 2022. And so my, um, well, she's an esthetician, but she also is licensed to, to do, I don't know, what would it be called? microblader, I don't know, brow specialist. Let me know if you know the official word down in the comments. But um, she said that she recommends everybody coming in at least once a year to get a touch up. And so that was what I had done this week. Now I am pre-filming this a little bit. So I had this done two days ago. Um, so my brows, initially what they do is when you first get them done, they are a, they look a little bit red and they're very, very dark. Um, I will go ahead and include a picture right here of my before I had it done and then after. Um, the before, before picture, you will see that my brows have faded quite a bit over the last year. And part of that I think is because I do have, um, I wouldn't say I have excessively oily skin, but I have normal to oily skin. Um, I also think that I may have gone wrong initially when um, I had the procedure done initially. I was seeing some of the flakes come off and they tell you don't pick the flakes off because it can ruin the healing process. And I think I was a little bit anxious to get some of those flakes off. And I think that that did impact um, like the lasting power of the pigment. However, 
I would still recommend it because um, I liked that my brows still looked more filled in when I wasn't wearing makeup. And then when I did decide to put makeup on, I had a really nice outline to be able to know where to fill in. And I just felt like my brows looked a lot better. However, now with this touch up, um, I told Monique, that is um, the gal who did my brows. I asked her, I said, why don't we go a little bit darker on the outside and let's do some hair like strokes in the front. Um, and we'll see how how that turns out. She also said if for some reason, you know, when after this healing process happens, she said if you're not satisfied with how dark they are or the shading, she says that you can always come in free of charge and we'll go ahead and um, add a little bit more pigment. So those are my thoughts about this procedure. Um, for me, I personally did not find it very painful at all. Like on a scale of one to 10, the discomfort level I would say it was maybe like a two and a half. Um, the only thing I think that can be a little bit uncomfortable is when they go in initially to like, they have to go in with like a pass to kind of break the skin um, a little bit. And that she does do before numbing, before applying a numbing agent. And that is a little bit, it just kind of feels like not even super painful. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like a little, almost like when you get like a burn or something like that. And it's funny because when they do it right in here, it actually makes me feel like I have to sneeze. Um, and she said that's a fairly common reaction that people have. But overall, I did not find it to be very painful at all. Um, she was very good about letting the numbing agent take effect. And then the actual like shading and everything was actually, oddly, I found it kind of relaxing. I know, I'm weird. But I would recommend the procedure if you have been thinking about it, I would say that you would want to do some research, make sure you talk to other people in your area. If you've seen, if you're out in public and you see somebody who has really nice brows, ask them. I mean, I feel like most people these days are, it's not as taboo um, to have procedures done, whether that is things like getting micro shading or whatnot, or maybe some other procedures like Botox filler. I feel like people are a little bit more open about that these days. So if you see somebody that has them done really well, um, just ask who they go to. Me personally, oh boy. The clouds are coming and going, so you're probably seeing the lighting change. I'm sorry for that. Um, but if you are in the Phoenix area, uh, the woman that I see to do my brows is Monique Verdon. Um, she's with the Skin and Beauty Company in Surprise, Arizona. So I'll have her Instagram linked down below if you want to check her out. Um, but yes, very, very happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and dive into a candle to talk about. This is Kringle Candles. Mon Amour. Now this is in their three wick, 100% soy. You guys know that I was very excited about this candle because it was inspired by one of my favorite perfumes, which is Baccarat Rouge 540. Spoiler alert, I don't have the actual Baccarat Rouge 540 because um, your girl here just is not gonna spend $400 on a bottle of perfume. More power to you if you feel like that's a priority to spend that much money on a perfume. It's not for me, but I do have the Dossier Dupe, which I have heard is very, very similar. If you've never smelled the perfume, it's similar, like in the same line as um, Ariana Grande's Cloud, or um, if you are familiar with the Sol de Janeiro, their light pink, I think it's called like the Bea Fleur. If you like that scent, then you would really like this fragrance. So the fragrance notes on this are Vanilla Orchid, Crimson Blooms, Sugar Crystals, Star Jasmine, Caramel Strands, Oak Moss, Red Amber, Gilded Musk, Sandalwood. There's a lot of fragrance notes in here, but I'm just gonna say if you've smelled any of those perfumes or any of those fragrances that I just mentioned, that is what this smells like. Ugh, smells like. I'm trying not to cough right now, you guys, because my throat still gets dry. Um, hold up, let me get a sip of water. All right, I needed that. Let's continue on. So this candle, first off, the packaging on it is absolutely stunning. This painted three wick jar is just beautiful and it's got the hammered lid, which honestly, I mean, it's a nice touch. I don't really pay that much attention to the lid packaging on my candles. This is a jar that I will actually save once I am done with this candle because I love the vessel so much. I'm going to save it and use it to burn some of the daylights in, um, but the packaging on this is absolutely stunning. What I will say about this is that the burn has been flawless as I have come to expect with the 100% soy formula from Kringle. The strength and throw on this one has been really interesting. So I found that the first few burns on this, I was actually really disappointed with, um, with the performance, not, not the wax pool or the wicks, those have been perfect. But the first couple of burns, I would say the first two times that I burned this candle, 
the fragrance was almost non-existent. You guys, it was like a two to three. And I was like, oh my word, what is going on? Everybody else is talking about how this is such a powerhouse and it's burning so well for them. About the third burn in, I started to realize, okay, I can smell this. I was burning it in my bedroom, which is close concept, lower ceilings than my living room right now where I'm sitting. Um, I have higher ceilings in here. And here's where I'm gonna say right now with this candle, this is like a medium, strength and throw. So if you are somebody that does not want to be bowled over with fragrance, which honestly I think is probably the safe way to go with a candle that is inspired by a very popular perfume, um, perfumey scents can be headache inducing very quickly. So I, I don't know if they were trying to play it safe with this one. And I know some people, they want to be overwhelmed with fragrance. I would say like on a scale of one to 10 right now, this candle is about a five for me. Um, just being honest, and you guys know I'm a Kringle ambassador, but I am sharing honest thoughts with you. Um, I wouldn't say that that's a bad thing. Pref, I personally love a strength or throw of around a seven. Seven to eight is usually my like, that is perfect for me. So I would like this candle to be a little bit stronger, but the fragrance itself is absolutely beautiful. And I have found that I think the more I burn this one, the better it gets. So if you have this candle, and maybe you haven't started burning it yet, don't be surprised if those first couple of burns are very, very light. I am finding that it's getting stronger the the, um, the longer I go. Um, I know Mick sometimes watches my videos, so Mick, if you're watching this, um, can you comment down below if the, if it has something to do with maybe the oil settling or whatnot, why, why we would be experiencing maybe a little bit, um, I would say like stronger fragrance as the candle burns down, I'm just, it's just something that I've noticed not only with this candle, but with um, a couple of the other new Kringle candles. So, um, or maybe if you are more familiar with how, you know, how this process works, let us know in the comment box down below. All right, so I mentioned last week I was sick, and then this week I'm not wearing a ton of makeup, and it has caused me to reach into my makeup stash for a product that I recommend for everybody even my friends who pretty much don't wear makeup. Like I, I honestly do have a couple of friends who don't wear makeup. They're like, I want something maybe to make me feel a little bit more put together, but they, it's just, it's not a priority for them to put on makeup every day. And you know what? I love them anyways. Um, and they're beautiful anyways too. That's what I always want to say too. But this is a product that I recommend that everybody has in their arsenal because we are entering a time of year where there's a lot of allergies going on. We're all getting those dark circles. Um, I told you last week I was sick and um, I'm still get dealing with a little bit of like a post nasal drip cough that always loves to come about at night, which means I'm not sleeping as well. And this product makes it look like I got a full night of sleep. This is the Becca and now it's the Becca and Smashbox under eye brightening corrector. Now mine is in the light to medium. You will see that it is like a very light pink shade. Um, I just need the tiniest amount of this. I, I pick it up with my middle finger and I go ahead and I dot it in right here and I just blend it out with my finger. Now this is a very emollient product. It is one that I would highly suggest that you use some type of under eye setting powder with because otherwise it may settle into fine lines and creases. You also need a very little amount of this. You don't need a lot of it. If you get too much, it's gonna, it's gonna cake up and look crazy. But it is a very emollient, um, I, I really like the texture of it. it, it um, I find it soothing. It's not as dry as my Bobbi Bobby Brown under eye corrector. And that one is also a little bit more peachy toned. This one is a little bit more pink. Um, but I find this to be like the perfect under eye corrector because it doesn't look like you're wearing concealer on days when you're just wanting to wear very minimal or no makeup. I actually have it on today. Um, and I find that it just does give a little bit more life to your under eye area. I would highly, highly recommend this product. And now I do believe that it is being sold under the Smashbox label because I believe Becca went out of business almost two years ago. All right, let's talk about another candle this week. This is a candle that I had done an in-depth candle review about two weeks ago um, in preparation for the big Bath & Body Works sale. I'm not sure if this one is still in stock. I I think it is. I mean, last time I went into Bath and Body Works, that was even after the candle sale and I still saw plenty of them in stock. This is Dark Amber and Oud. Now this is a fragrance that I talked about saying that this is not necessarily one 
that I would have seen myself picking up a year ago. Um, it just goes to show you that sometimes it's good to broaden our horizons because we find that we might like different things. Now the fragrance notes on this are dark golden amber, fresh rainwater, and oud wood. This is part of the White Barn. I want to say it's like the Naturals, Natural Blends collection. It's just a very clean aesthetic with it. There's this, this matte black jar. Um, I did an in-depth review on this, but the reason I've been burning this a lot this week is that we have had some rainy weather coming through, which I'm not going to complain. We don't see a lot of rain in Arizona, but this winter we have had quite a bit of it. And um, it's just been very interesting because I know I, I mentioned this, it seems like almost every video, but it really has been interesting. Usually this time of year, we are around 75 degrees every day. And today it's only a high of 62. We've got clouds coming in in and out which is why you see my lighting probably change but um this has been a really nice fragrance to burn on those cloudy kind of rainy days um it's a what i would de describe as like a traditionally masculine scent in here you do get that oud wood but there is a freshness of whatever accords they're putting together for or like a freshness on that rainwater accord so whatever fragrance notes they're putting together for that little bit of dark amber in there lends the slightest bit of warmth. I have really been enjoying burning this one, particularly in the evenings, but I've actually been burning it during the day when we have had rainy weather. So if you're looking for something that is like kind of fresh and woodsy, if that's kind of fragrances that you gravitate towards, I would highly recommend picking this one up. I will say that I am about... I'm a little over halfway on the burn. I would say that I, I'm about two thirds through on this burn. And you can see that the wicks are starting to slow down and develop what I call that puny wick syndrome. Now, my friend Tiffany, Tiffany Vanessa, she says, you know, a lot of the things with Bath and Body Works, we complain about them getting puny wicks, but it's actually just that the burn is slowing down on it. So I have been resisting the temptation to throw them in the crock and just letting them kind of burn. I'm having the same experience with my um, vanilla and musk candle, but they're still burning well and they're still throwing pretty well. So as long as I'm still getting scent with them upon the burn, um, I'm going to go ahead and keep burning them and not sticking them in the crock. All right. Another beauty product that I am going to talk about, you may notice my hair is wavy today. My hair by nature on its own, stick straight, no texture in it, takes about 5 billion products to get it to hold any kind of wave or curl. Um, but I have had this waving iron for 10 years now. And it's been one that I just keep reaching for this week because I feel like, well, if I can't do my makeup, I want to do something a little bit fun and different with my hair. So this is the Bedhead or TG Wave Artist. Now, like I said, this one I have had for 10 years, but I do know that um, this, this is still, I believe, in stock through Bedhead. It probably looks a little bit different. Hot Tools has their variation of it. Now, this is a deep waver, deep waving iron, so it might look different than some of those like ones that look like they have like the three barrels on it. I have tried those and I've honestly returned them because I find that they just don't give my hair the same level of wave as this one does. I, I don't know what it is. And you guys, I don't even think this product is super expensive. I think it's less than $40 or $50, which... For a hair tool is not so bad, um, but there is the on off switch on the side and then there's the open and close feature. Um, and the way that I use this is that I, I actually think I have a, a tutorial here. Maybe I do have a tutorial here on my channel. If I do, I will make sure that I have it linked in the description box below and up in the cards above. But I go in layer by layer and I turn it upside down and then just go this way and slowly kind of crimp down. Um, but this is just a fun different way to wear my hair this week. Um, I call it my mermaid hair. It's a hairstyle that I particularly like to wear as we head into warmer months. So if you are looking to achieve maybe some mermaid inspired hair or um, maybe just do a little bit something, just do a little something different for a night out on the town, then I would suggest picking up this product. All right, you guys, last candle that I am going to talk about this week um, I'm having to eat my words on. So if you caught my Kringle haul, which one would it have been? I think it would have been up maybe two weeks ago. It was when, um, it was when they released some of the, their new spring fragrances and they have reformulated a lot of their new country candles into the 100% soy formula. 
And I picked up quite a few of the fragrances, the ones that really appealed to me. And it was funny because there was a fragrance that I saw that I was like, oh, I'm gonna love that. I know it, I was looking at the fragrance notes and I got it in and I smelled it on cold sniff and I was like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like it. I'm talking about Country Candles, Grapefruit and Rosemary. All right, so this is the medium sized jar. You will see that I have burned it quite a bit, okay? You will also see that um, the wicks on here do get those mushroom tops, so um, you will need to trim those. I will trim them before I burn this candle next. All right, you guys, so here's the thing I wanna say. I did not like this candle on cold sniff. Did not like it at all. Still, when I smell it on cold sniff, it's a little funny to me. I lit this one up and I actually really liked it. Um, just goes to show you, sometimes you need to give a, a candle a chance, just light it up. If I mean, unless it's one that you just absolutely smell it on cold and you were like, nope, 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 not gonna happen, fine, then go ahead and gift it to somebody else. But if it's one that you smell and you're like, I don't know about that, light it up because I have been really, really happy with this fragrance. Um, this, this smells really good. It's very clean. Um, I do get that grapefruit and some of the rosemary note in here. Now, I don't mind an herbal note in some candles. Um, in fact, you guys know that lemon, no, rosemary lemon from Kringle, it was my favorite fragrance of 2022. And I, I don't smell the same rosemary note in this candle as I do in that rosemary lemon, but there is still an herbal um, an herbal vibe to this one, but the grapefruit really comes out. This is very nice and fresh. Um, I've loved burning it on you know these spring days where I have my windows open. It just makes my house smell very clean. Um, one of my favorite like scent combinations where I have been burning this is I will have this one here in my living room and then I've been burning Kringle's Essentials in my bedroom. Um, if you have Sunwash Citrus or Capri Blue Volcano, similar fragrance. And then what's the other one that I, oh, and then I'll also burn Rosemary Lemon on the other side of the house. And the three of them together, um, none of them compete with each other, but they complement one another very well. Strength and throw on this one has been pretty good for me. Now, what I will say is that I am finding on um, these uh, country soy wax formula, the country soy wax formula, what I am finding is that about the first hour of the burn, I'm not really smelling anything, but suddenly about an hour and a half into the burn, the fragrance just really, really, I wanna say explodes. I mean, that's a little bit dramatic, but the fragrance really starts to take over. This one for me has been a solid medium to high strength and throw. I would say like an eight, eight and a half. That is my sweet spot. I have really, really been loving this, but I like it to be at that eight because like I said, I will burn other fragrances in other areas of my house and I want them to complement, not compete with one another. So. I have to say, you guys, I owe an apology for saying that I don't like this candle because I actually really do. I think this is a very nice fragrance for this time of year, especially if you are maybe doing some spring cleaning and want your home to smell fresh and clean. Really, really nice scent. Not something that I was thinking I would say when I initially opened this one. So. That is it for this week. Let me know in the comment box down below, have you had a favorite fragrance that you have been burning in your home this week? I would be curious to know. Have you burned any of these? Um, what has been your experience with them? I always encourage you to chime in, particularly with candles because we all have different sized homes. We have different fragrance preferences. Um, even, you know, burning preferences. I think like, you know, some of us want powerhouses and others of us are content with having medium strength and throw or maybe even a low strength and throw because you just want that fragrance in the background. Um, also, the under eye corrector, do you guys have this in your arsenal? Because it's really, really good. Um, anybody else have experience with your microbladed brows? I would be curious to hear about it. As always, I just love hearing from you guys in the comment section. If you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you have watched a couple of my videos and you have not yet hit that subscribe button, please do so. Um, you know, it really helps me out. My goal this year is to hit at least 1,000 subscribers and I am 
getting there. I'm well on my way. Um, and I just want to say thank you to those of you who are already subscribed to my channel. I know I feel like I say that every week, but it really does mean a lot to me um, that you guys come back week after week, um, video after video, and give your input and thought. I really enjoy the community that we have going on here on this channel. And um, I just want to say thank you so much for spending your time here with me today and on other days. YouTube should be suggesting another one of my videos if you would like to stick around for that. But if not, I just want to say thanks for being around this time. Until my next one, you guys, I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day. Bye.